So a few months ago, I hit up Intel for a Haswell E sample one week before the big launch. And much to my surprise, they sent me all three flavors of the Haswell E family. And before we go any further, I'd like to dedicate this video to my favorite pair of pants that were lost that day. As many of you know, the 5960X went straight into my new editing rig, but the other two members have since then been collecting dust. I guess you could say they've been idling. <laughs> Fortunately, the idling ends today, because I've finally put all three CPUs into an X99 testbed, given them a proper overclocking, and run a few benchmarks to see how they perform in different areas. This might give those of you interested in Haswell E an idea of which CPU is worth your money, given your particular workload. But before we check out the results, I did want to provide a quick recap on today's contenders. The most affordable of the enthusiast trio is the Core i7-5820K, coming in at around $375. The 6-core 12-thread processor has a base clock of 3.3 GHz that turbos up to 3.6, along with 15 MB of L3 cache and 28 PCI Express 3.0 lanes. At $570 is the matured 5930K, with the same number of cores and cache, but comes at a slightly higher base clock of 3.5 GHz, turboing to 3.7. Still, the main feature that sets it apart from the 5820K is support for 40 PCIe 3 lanes, allowing you to fully drive two video cards at X16, or three cards at X16, X16, and X8. And at the top of the food chain, of course, is the 8-core 16-thread behemoth, weighing in at just over $1,000, the 5960X. This chip runs at 3 GHz out of the box with a turbo of 3.5, it also gets the full 40 PCIe lanes and 5 additional megabytes of L3 cache over the other two plebs. The other glorious advantage of Haswell eCPUs is their support for Intel's X99 chipset and the long-awaited DDR4 memory. That of course leaves us to the testbed I'll be using, which includes an X99 Extreme 4 motherboard from ASRock and a 4x4GB quad-channel kit. Of course, there's Vengeance low-profile memory at 2800 MHz. Cameo appearances by the EVGA GTX 970 for the Win Edition, Corsair's H105, their AX1200i power supply, and their Force LX SSD equipped with Windows 8 Pro. Having just 128GB of flash storage, I've also added in a 4TB WD Red Drive, primarily for storing games. Now, I didn't go too crazy when overclocking these CPUs, as rock-solid stability was of paramount importance. Still, I managed to hit 4400MHz across the board at around one3 volts, a personal target which I made a point not to go too far beyond. Putting the three CPUs in the octagon, the first test I ran was Cinebench 15, which was my only synthetic benchmark. Interestingly enough, the 5820K pulled ahead of the 5930K by a decent margin, while we can clearly see the 5960X flexing its extra cores and cache. As a force of habit, I also ran a couple gaming benchmarks to check for any variances, but as expected, we see a three-way tie in both games due to running a single video card. Surely we'd see more obvious performance gains from the top two CPUs if a second GTX 970 was added to saturate more PCIe lanes. Rendering a short but involved composition in After Effects CS6 shaved off a few seconds with each subsequent CPU, as the program is multi-threaded and takes equal advantage of all cores. The same goes for Premiere Pro CS6, except we see a much wider lead for the 5960X, which rendered the 10-minute clip nearly 20% faster than the 5930K, but at the cost of getting quite a bit hotter. So there you guys have it. Obviously, there's no doubt Haswell E is very overclockable. I would just suggest that you get at least a double radiator liquid cooler if you plan on pushing your clock speeds above 4 GHz, as these chips can get quite hot, as you just saw. Remember, with a greater number of cores comes great responsibility to keep them cool. So judging from the results, what does Haswell E mean for gaming? Unfortunately, I couldn't show all 40 PCIe lanes in action today because I only had one video card, but that alone says a lot in and of itself. Haswell E and X99 is currently the strongest platform to have for a multi-GPU setup, but for most of us who are gaming on a single card, it makes more sense to save some money and opt for Haswell and Z97, unless you're also using some multi-threaded applications. At that point, you're faced with the decision of which Haswell E CPU to get. Well, based on the results we've seen today, there isn't much difference between the 5820K and the 5930K in terms of specs and even performance on a single video card workstation. So given the much lower price tag, I'd have to say the 5820K would be my first pick. Then, of course, if you suffer from that sad condition where money falls out of your butt and you just can't seem to 
to spend it fast enough, so annoying. Then go for the eight cores and pick up a 5960X, you lucky bastard. As always, toss me a like on this video if you found it helpful, guys. It helps me a lot. And let me know what you think about the latest enthusiast CPUs from our friends at Intel. I'm also curious to know what overclocking tips or tricks have you learned along the way in your endeavors as a PC enthusiast? Leave me some good ones down below so I can steal them. <laughs> Don't forget to bookmark my Amazon affiliate link and pick up a torso chassis while you're at it. You can also make a monthly contribution on Patreon to help the awesome sauce cause. I'm Kyle with Awesome Sauce Network. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.